the participant and he is a counterfeiter. There should be a picture on Time magazine with him flying a helicopter, pushing out money. Congressman, no. But they end up that he's helicopter man. Aloha mai kako. You are watching Hawaii Political Reporter. Aloha, and thank you for watching Hawaii Political Reporter. Tonight, Bob Patrici of the Punapono Alliance on Geothermal and Environmental Problems, the PLDC. Also, an excerpt from The Secret of Oz showing the manipulation of our monetary system and a message on gun rights. Well, it's no secret to any American that we're living in very precarious times. Americans are being robbed blind, and they don't even know who's doing the robbing. I mean, we clearly are you know, in a bus and we're heading for the edge of a cliff. And there still is probably time to change course. The only problem is the people driving the bus don't realize that there's a cliff there yet. If the problem that's uh, grinding the economy to a halt is too much debt, and if nobody in the government, in either party, is looking at solving the debt problem, then the answer is it's going to go uh, to, into a depression as far as the eye can see. And so we're going to have a massive, massive uh, recession, or let's call it a depression, while the economy rebalances away from a service sector economy towards a good producing economy, away from a borrow and spend economy to a save and produce economy. That's what we need to do. We can't get from where we are to where we need to be without a severe depression. What can government do? The sad answer is, under our current monetary system, nothing. It's not going to get any better until the root cause of the problem is understood and addressed. There isn't enough stimulus money in the entire world to get us out of this hole. Why? Debt. The national debt is just like our consumer debt. It's the interest that's killing us. You must understand that every penny, every dollar we have in circulation is created as an interest-bearing debt. So what is the national debt? When government spends more than it collects in taxes, it has to borrow the difference by selling interest-bearing IOUs such as U.S. bonds. When a U.S. bank buys a $100 U.S. bond, it gets to loan out 10 times that amount. So, the bank not only gets back the $100 plus interest from the federal government, it gets to loan out another $1,000 it doesn't have and charge additional interest. Banks are allowed to create this extra money out of thin air. That's why bank buildings are the biggest in every town on the planet. This system of lending way more than you have is called fractional reserve lending. Almost all our money is created by banks, lending it to people, to companies, or to government. As we'll see, there is a better way for a government to get money. Simply issue it without debt for the benefit of all citizens equally. Abraham Lincoln did it, Ben Franklin did it, Jefferson wanted to do it. Honest Americans have fought against this bank-controlled debt money system throughout American history. But unless we change it soon, most of our freedoms will soon be lost in a tidal wave of debt. Seventy-five years ago, an employee of the Atlanta Federal Reserve explained the importance of the debt money system and how it can strangle our economy. Someone has to borrow every dollar we have in circulation. If the banks create ample money, we are prosperous. If not, we starve. When one gets a complete grasp of the picture, the tragic absurdity of our hopeless position is incredible. It is the most important subject intelligent persons can investigate and reflect upon. Our government should never go into debt. It doesn't need to go into debt. A government can issue the money it needs. That's absolutely right. Under our current money system, the government has to borrow our money into existence, then pay interest on it. That's why they call it the national debt. All our money is created out of debt. Politicians who focus on reducing the national debt without trying to actually fix the underlying cause probably don't understand what the national debt really is. To reduce the national debt would be to reduce our money, and there's already not enough money for the average person. Why haven't we heard this before? 
because most of the media and Congress are beholding to the big banks for loans. Yes, Congress still appropriates money, but where do they get it? Again, what they can't raise from taxes, they borrow from banks. In 2009, Congress will spend over $4 trillion, but they will have to borrow half of it. But on top of that, in 2008-2009, Congress bailed out the biggest banks by giving them nearly a trillion dollars. The worst part is, we aren't just giving the money away, we're borrowing it to give it away. If we don't do something about the fact that we are now in a situation where the additional debt we're taking on is actually depressing GDP, we're going to have a major problem here in the very near future. You can't keep doing that forever. Sooner or later, the people that loan us that money are going to say, no, we're not going to loan you anymore. One of the things I think that's difficult to, to figure out from the political side of this thing, it's clear that they're making a lot of mistakes. And the question I, in my mind is, are these mistakes? Could people in Washington, you know, the highest officials of the land, really be ignorant about <laughs> what they're doing? Because I can't look at what the politicians are doing in Washington. I can't look at that and say, there's any hope of that working. And these guys have to face an election. Now, when the next election rolls around, they're not going to be politically popular figures. There are going to be consequences for the politicians. So what makes them push the wrong buttons? <laughs> the other day I heard a senator on TV say, the trouble with General Motors, they have too much debt. And so the solution is to give them another big loan. Well, you can't borrow yourself out of debt. General Motors can't, you and I can't, the federal government can't. Nobody can borrow themselves out of debt. No more than, like I said before, you cannot drink yourself sober. And that's what we're all trying to do. So it don't make any difference what kind of stimulus. And Obama, he had the right idea. We're going to build lots of new roads, but he's going to borrow the money. Well, what, how, how, we can't even pay the debt now. I mean, we can't even pay the interest on it. And nobody's even talking about the debt problem as such. They're talking about the fact that, gee, the bankers aren't making enough money to uh, live in the way that they're accustomed to. Until politicians begin to understand where the root of the problem lies, we're never going to fix this. But the good news is that the solution isn't new or radical. America used to do it long before L. Frank Baum wrote about it. Throughout American history, politicians have fought with big bankers over it. But this aspect of our history has now been erased from history books. I think we need to reconsider and rethink, perhaps, uh, the very foundations of our economic and monetary system. Uh, the government, a government agency of some kind, should take charge uh, of the money supply. But that's not the way it is now in Great Britain. No, not, no, nor in every, not in any country. It's, it's almost all over the world. It, it, it's, um, the bulk of the money supply is now, is now created by commercial banks as debt. If we were starting, uh, uh, for people that were just at the start of, a, of the constitution of a society, and someone suggested, um, well, look, the best, thing, the best way of creating the money and putting it in um, is to combine it with the function of uh, providing a competitive profit-making market uh, for, for borrowing and lending, it would be regarded as idiotic. My name is Gary Johnson, and I believe the Second Amendment means what it says. These men fought for your right to keep and bear arms. These men opposed it. So how about it, Mr. President? Which side of history do you want to be on? You swore an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. Today, our Second Amendment rights are under threat. Do your duty to the American people or get out of the way. Be libertarian with me for one election. Together, we'll protect our Second Amendment rights, First Amendment rights, and all the other rights now being trampled by the people we elected to defend them. Live free.
I think uh, Malama Solomon and Dela Cruz, what's his name, the senator that's pushing this thing, and and uh, Denny Kaufman and Abercrombie and Brian Schwartz, they should all be removed from office. They're, they're either ineffective or incompetent or complicit with this. I mean, these are the same people that have put us in the position that we're in right now. We have the highest electricity, we have all of these problems, and they're now going to come to the rescue and save us with the PLDC and with geothermal. And really, who do they work for? Who do they represent? They represent the corporations. They don't have our best interests at heart, and geothermal is a perfect example of that. You know, something along that line, I, I would have to unfortunately mostly agree. And even if they did have our best intentions, and maybe some of them do, okay, uh, by the time it's executed and gone down the line, it's certainly not done efficiently, it's certainly not done effectively, and it is incredibly risky. So, you know, we, we think that the geothermal really is, in, is being put in place to benefit the status quo, the HELCO, HEI, HECO, the, the electric companies, and, and basically the monopoly that we have now. What's happening is because the rates in Hawaii are so high and our solar resource is so good, that people are leaving the, the grid in record numbers. And every year, the number of people leaving the grid and going solar has been doubling. Right now in Hawaii County, there is a backlog of people that want solar permits. And so they put up roadblocks. Helco won't accept power into the grid. If you want to do a grid tie system, you have to do a study. And, uh, and the county is requiring an architectural stamp and an engineering stamp and all of these things to try to to get the price of solar up and keep people on the grid. But even with all of that, it's still not working. People are still leaving the grid. And uh, you know, basically the problem is the, these guys, the governor and Brian Schatz and uh, Donovan Dela Cruz, Malama Solomon, Denny Kaufman, they're working for the corporations. Whether they, whether intentional or not, or you know, I'm not saying they're bad people, but either if they're, you know, they're either ineffective or, or, or uh, you know, whatever they're doing is not working for us. I, we don't see our prices coming down. With the move to the smart grid, the cable, all these new power plants, your, your rates for electricity are going to go up. I would not be surprised if they double. Anybody that tells you that geothermal and, and this cable is going to lower your electric rates is wrong or they're not telling you the truth. You know, Bob, I have to concur with you in general on what you've said there. But a little bit, I, I would also give a slight bit of defense to Helco because I do work with them and I also know the engineering. There is a problem if you, especially on a grid tied system, because solar does vary tremendously. Okay, so there are some problems in some areas. But I would also 100,000% agree with you that the county is making it difficult, especially with the architectural stamps and such now, uh, to, to permit the solar. And that was, I think, primarily, let's be honest, they just want to get a little bit more cut of what's going on. And some of it's not necessarily you know, inappropriate because they have their costs too, and they're trying to make sure good things are being done. But the solar could be a lot easier and, and less expensive to put in. And uh, I guess, you know what, uh, it just comes back to worrying me. I, I've never seen anything that the government or a large regulated, and this is a key word, regulated industry is going to do, okay, that's going to become more efficient over time. And putting geothermal, even if it's a great idea, in a, zo a zone one, you know, lava flow where you can't be insured and then centralizing everything back doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. And we all know these projects, okay, are going to always go way over cost. And our bill, I, I think I'm almost pretty positive that this is actually like you were saying, and I would like to actually have you back and I'd like to really follow the money on this whole thing sometime. You know, you say some money's coming in from grants here and there. Maybe we're paying for it now out of some fund, some tax, God knows what. That's okay. one of the questions we intend to ask at the EIS tonight. Mm -hmm. what, grants are, what grants have been put out there? What are they? We'd like to know about all of the grants. How much money? Because we think there's millions and millions and millions of dollars being spent on this that could go to to b help the solar communities, you yeah. know, because the biggest problem with going solar for people are the upfront costs, mm -hmm. and there's there's no program for us. You know, there's it, programs for these corporations, for all these development companies, but for the people that want to go solar, they, there's no program. Why can't we have some kind of a loan program that instead of paying an electric bill, we pay back the loan because it would lower our electric bills and keep money in our pocket. Let me blow your mind right now, go a little <laughs> bit off the subject, but it's totally related at the same time. What do you know that what the most abundant renewable resource that is used in the country is? 
used in the country, um, I don't. Hydroelectric. Okay, now actually I believe Hamakua could be well developed and a lot cleaner, some of that, that's one thing, okay. There are many technologies and things we could develop even in Pune without rivers to do that. So we don't have, you know, as good as solar is, and again, I'm, I, I install them daily, but it's not the whole tamale. There's other alternatives. Wind is probably not too practical in most instances. There are mechanical issues with that and such, but there are all other alternatives, okay? Yes, there are. And so geothermal doesn't have to be it, and I think anybody with any sense would actually want to have a mix anyways. We want to have a mix, but I'll, t I'll tell you, um, I really like solar, and uh, geothermal is just way too expensive and a scam. Now, when you talk about these, uh, you know, hydro as an example. Um, micro hydro. Micro hydro, mean. but you know, one of the things, uh, when they talk about batteries, mm -hmm. batteries are the problem with solar. Well, what, what, one of the biggest batteries, if you talk to, uh, Henry Curtis of Life of the Land, he'll tell you, is water. They, mm -hmm. they pump water with the extra power during the day there uphill, and there then at go. night they let the water run downhill and produce power at night, and they call that a battery. Yes. And that was something I've learned recently. And there are all kinds of battery technologies. So, uh, and you know, there's another really interesting thing. Out there in uh, Pohiki, where the Pune Geothermal Power Plant is, about a quarter mile past that plant, there's a guy putting up hundreds of solar panels. And uh, it's really interesting, he's going to make hydrogen. And that leads us into, you know, this whole thing is supposed to be based on uh, oil dependency that we have to get off fossil fuels. And we totally agree with that. I've been, I've felt that way for a long time since even before geothermal came along. We have to get off of fossil fuels. And so what we use to make electricity in Hawaii is the residual oil of the refining for jet fuel, which is our number one use. Uh, and transportation, gasoline, and diesel. Those, and then what's left over is this sludge, and that's what they burn to make electricity. So geothermal is not going to reduce our oil into ports or our dependence on oil. It's just not going to do it because transportation is what we have to do. So we need to produce hydrogen, or we're going to need to produce another way to make electricity with electric vehicles. But right now, we can convert the vehicles we have to hydrogen. And so that's something we should be looking at. Biodiesel, we have the new biodiesel plant in KL that can produce up to 5 million gallons of biodiesel a year. And I run all of my farm equipment and uh, all of my diesel trucks all on biodiesel, and I have for a long time. And it's cheaper and it's much cleaner. You know, Bob, I think absolutely you're right. And the batteries and many other things can be, you know, done that are not being conventionally done. For example, in our physics class, we took and did a calculation uh, basically, I think we filled a one, it was one acre, 10 feet deep, and we took that up, we pumped the water up to Waimea in this calculation, and doing that, we could actually store enough energy for the whole island for a week. I think it was one acre, 10 feet deep, if I remember. Maybe I'll break out the calcs and do it sometime. So yes, that is true. That is a way we could do the solar, and that's in that way for the to cover the base load. And as you were talking about the biofuels and stuff, I've worked on that a lot myself too for, for years actually. There's tremendous potential and yes, most of our energy, a lot of people don't know this, by far goes into the transportation, not in the house. That's right. And as a proportion, what you think you consume, multiply it by three because you know per, per proportion, there's so many things coming in by jet, as Bob was mentioning, by, by, you know, the ships coming in, the refrigeration, the stoplights, you know, there's a lot of energy, tremendous amounts of energy we consume and we need to address and the uh, <coughs> Jet A and, oh, excuse me, all the liquid fuel are certainly one of them. So, Bob, uh, you were mentioning, did you want to go into the PLDC or what, what else would you like to talk um, well, about? Well, one more thing on, on this mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, home solar. energy, solar water heaters. Oh, yeah. In the state of Hawaii right now, about 25% of the homes use solar water heaters. Mm -hmm. An average house that uses, according to the state now, the average house that uses electric water heater, a third of their bill, about 39% of their electric bill is just to heat water. So right now we could, like you're talking about conservation, mm -hmm. you know, we waste so much energy. And uh, so what we really need is a program to retrofit all of those houses. They have a pretty good program for mm -hmm. new homes. 
So the new homes being built, do a lot of them do have solar water heaters, although there are exemptions and people exempt out. What we really need is some kind of a program off the shelf, affordable solar water heaters to reduce the amount of power we use. The problem goes back again to Helco loses money. The, the model that's set up in this monopoly with Helco, the more power you sell, the more money you spend, the more money you make. So there's an incentive to not really get that done. And the other problem with solar water heaters is the regulation again. It costs $7,000 to put in a solar water heater. It should cost about a Two permits and a lot of other, a lot of stuff. It's engineering, it. and it should cost about, I build solar water heaters. We build our own. We don't buy them. It costs mm -hmm. me less than $500. It's, you should be able to put a solar water heater on your house. For, and, you know, if the state was serious, if they really want to be renewable, sustainable, mm -hmm. green, and get off of oil, there's a lot of things they can do. It, but what they're doing is is not working we we have where i live there is no helco no power lines we've been on solar been on solar for years the whole community thousands of us we don't have helco we'd have solar our own systems it's a perfect model for exactly what they're talking about and we're farmers we grow our own food. We're doing everything that the state says they want to do. So what happens? They're going to come down there and build power plants and ammonia manufacturing. And that's not going to help farming. They're going to destroy the model community of exactly what they say they want to be. You know, Bob, two things along those lines. I have to absolutely concur with you. The solar thermal or the solar hot water heater, that's a very efficient. It's actually much more efficient than the solar electric now. It should be very inexpensive. And, you know, I also have to concur because I have to deal with this all the time. There's way too much regulation and cost added on by the state and the government. If you truly want a state to be more energy independent and to go for the renewables, please lower the obstacles for all of us. That's exactly okay? right. That'll help a lot. Instead of dictating a one-size-fits-all program that you're going to shove down our throat, which is probably going to be a freaking albatross by the time it's done. Okay. <laughs> well, here on, the, here on the Big Island, as a good example of that is the building codes. Mm -hmm. um, we have a mainland-type building code here. And a, an affordable house on the Big Island yeah. is considered about $240,000 or something <laughs> like that. Affordable. And we, we really don't know any. But yeah. the reason that house costs two hundred and forty thousand dollars is because of the building codes. We can I I built houses for years. Mm -hmm. We can build a house for seventy five thousand. Moke Stevens uh, estimated he did all the calculations all the way through that over ninety percent when you take everything along the line is actually in taxes, fees, regulations, and unnecessary stuff. So remember, in the new modern house, ninety percent <laughs> of that house. Does, is waste, essentially, so or someone gonna, else cutting into your And money. we're going to stray off subject here for a little bit, but since we're talking about this, you have a 240000 300 whatever you guys pay for your house, and you have to get a mortgage for that, and now you owe the bank, and you work for the bank for 30 years. If you could get a house for $75,000, it would keep that money here in the economy. I mean, those are the Amen, kind of things. Those are the kind of things that Amen. the governor and, and it would, Mayor Billy Kanoy and Solomon, Senator Solomon and Donald Dela Cruz, they're not getting that done. They're, you know, they're not. They're not. That's why our economy is, is the way it is. Because the money's out of our hands, we yeah. cannot employ it productiv productively to go and do other things like sustainable farms. Okay, like working on alternative energy here, including bio. There's so much that we could do here because we have the land, we have the knowledge, we have the desire, we have the people, we have God-given land and sun and water here. We could do it, you know, if they would just get out of the way in a lot of cases and let us have a little bit of our money to try That's to do right. something with it. That's right. And a lot of us are doing it and... Uh, you know, then you, you're illegal, you don't have the right permits and all mm -hmm. that. But a lot of people where I live can't afford a $240,000 house, yeah. you know, so. And, and a, you know, and a $7,000 water system, yeah, okay, exactly. that's mandated. Exactly, so we build our own. I, I could tell you in the solar now, you could probably reduce at least 10% of the cost, definitely, the solar electric, if, if the county and state was a little bit more cooperative. Well, you also have the federal government has stepped in this mm -hmm. year, and they put a 30% tariff on solar panels imported from China. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, the government is... 
keeping the solar prices high. And they argue, well, it's going to just it's going to hurt the domestic solar industry. But my thing was, okay, if the government wants to get off of oil, if they're serious, and China wants to dump all these solar panels really cheap, why didn't the government buy all the solar panels and put them on everybody's house and would be off oil? That's definitely one point, and I could see it. I'm not arguing against it. I'm just going to put the other side of that is, and here's what, because I do follow that, and that is my primary business. And what's happened is, and this is the, and the interesting thing about this is actually our own government is being beat by another government because essentially the reason those panels are cheap is because a lot of these other governments want to get in that business and they're subsidizing it. So what happens, China and the other, they can't make the panels for the low cost they're selling them either. And by the way, they are generally not the same quality. The silicon the United States makes is the best by far in the world. We do the processors, we do the things. So when you buy an American product, not only are you helping our country, you are buying, I believe, a better product. But having said that, you know, they're, they're getting pretty good. I have nothing against American products. I have nothing against American products. You know? nothing against and I hear what you're saying, too. And there, that is true. I mean, in a way, if they want to subsidize it and their government wants to lose and give it away, you know, I mean, that's something well, else, too. Well, we're Some subsidizing geothermal power plants. Here. Yes, and you many know, other things. We're subsidizing things. cables, and we're subsidizing all these things. And, and the key uh, word is we are. We, that's okay. right. I not mean. not the government. <laughs> we are. That's it's right. off our backs. That's it's right. off our bills. It's that's off right. our taxes and such as that, you know. So Bob, I, I, I think we have a gigantic issue here because it ties into so many things. We're talking e economics, really. We're talking energy. We're talking health. We're talking government slash home rule. We're talking monopolistic corporations, you know, supported uh, to legally plunder, okay, people yeah. via their enforcer, large source segments of the government. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Yeah. But uh, we've got uh, a large, important uh, meeting and things starting with the federal government, the uh, programmatic environmental impact study for uh, renewable energy, which is going to be happening. I know Bob and the Punapono Alliance are going to be very much involved. We will keep you updated. We will be in on that. We've already contacted the Department of Energy and are trying to get the full information that, that we can. Bob is doing a fantastic job, whether even if you disagree with him, I mean, I think you've got to recognize this man is on top of it. He's living it. He's walking the talk. Okay. I mean, he knows what's going on. I personally, myself, was very neutral on this issue. I don't want to cause anybody to lose their job. I certainly like to see a capital investment like is down there in Puta Geothermal Ventures. I'd certainly like to see it succeed. And God bless everybody for trying. But you know, we've got to be responsible, and we cannot walk over people's health. And I just that's my my thought. And I think also, you know, the more centralized and large that you know, the the it's just not working. It doesn't work. And I have to, in practical terms. I have to say, Bob, I think really most of what you're saying is right on target, and we need to consider it. I, I you know? think we can create a lot of jobs, and, and we can keep a lot more money in our economy, because a lot of the money is leaving our economy, because this is all corporations. Really, international, large corporations that have too much control here, too mm -hmm. much influence in our government. Uh, we have a website, punapono.com. If anybody wants to go there, you can uh, you can read. There's all kind of links to different stuff. Punapono.com. Also, I know uh, Kerry Marks uh, and Occupy Hawaii. They have a lot of material. They pretty much videotape almost videotape everything. everything. So you could check out. You could go to YouTube and do that. We are getting up to speed and working with Bob too and uh, trying to fully cover this well-deserved and well-intentioned effort. And uh, I just like one side note, you know, nothing against corporations in general, but I'm, they're talking ones who honestly make their money and are not using the system against the people. That's my feeling, personally. I, I, just, okay. I just think that, uh, you know, we need a break. You know, yeah. they've been bailed out. A lot of these guys have yeah, been Yeah, we're out. talking about ones who are working with the government. <laughs> it's time to, to bail us out. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, we're, uh, no, I don't think anybody. We're paying for it anyway. I yeah. don't think any of the people are, are wanting us, okay, to be subsidizing, you know, corporations that are actually hurting us. It doesn't yeah, make a lot of sense. I, I just think know? the future is not centralized power. It's, uh, you know, distributed power where you, pr you use mm -hmm. the power where you use it because when you have to move the power along, and, and move it around, it increases your cost by at least 50%. And there's many, many, many other issues we could go on. And when we have time, we can go into methane, hydrogen, which we barely touched on. Please check this one last thing out before we let you go. Energy from thorium.com. Put an open mind, listen carefully. Check out Dr. Kiki's Science Hour in the video. Energy from thorium.com. Thorium is what powers our volcanoes. It's what's under here. It is the they generally the largest power source on this earth for heat. Check it out, energyfromthorium.com. 
listen, give it a fair chance to click on the link from Dr. Kiki Science Hour and listen, you'll be surprised. It's another positive thing that we could be doing here and it's proven in the past. Thank you again, Bob. Thank we you, appreciate Ross. your time Thank greatly. Thank you for having us. Aloha. Aloha. God bless. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Mahalo, guys. In 1913, the money power of the country was taken away from the people, but it was given up in the Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve is no more federal than Federal Express. Ba 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 ba. You try a hide on, you sure a freedom ma. You seek agenda, we know you know you anti-American. You come poverty American Constitution. 1913, corrupt in the system. Devalue dollar, hyperinflation, the federal reason, controlled by Lucifer. <laughs> he can't see you lying.